that's not important but this is important with that let's welcome norman to our show hey man you're now live in the midst with all of us how is it going hey how you doing i am doing great how are you i'm doing good i, I mean i i can't complain you know just enjoying just enjoy my day definitely 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 what did you do today if you mind me asking <laughs> Uh, I, nothing really. I just worked on my uh, second book right now. I'm trying to finish it up, and uh, I got more books to finish up. I got a lot of, you know, um, projects in the works. So I'm just trying to finish these books as quick as I can and get the covers out and get everything copywritten and out there on the market. You know, definitely. That yeah. sounds like a lot of work, man. When does it ever stop? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I heard Never. that. I heard of that, man. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to uh, speak with us about books. Um, your time is definitely appreciated. And uh, so, excuse my ramble if I tend to ramble with the uh, questions and in between. It's just, just one of my uh, superpowers, but others call it a, um, I don't know, what's the opposite of, of a superpower? A weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go over here at Vigilante Radio but you know let's start with you though um, for those who aren't familiar with who you are as an author give us an idea about what you're all about uh, well I mean as a, as a writer you know you just you just gotta go with everything that's happening in your life um, say like for me like when I was when I write I tend I tend to write I tend to write to for the audience out there. I don't write for myself a lot of times, you know. Mm. Um, as you know, I, I you know I've been through a lot, a lot of stuff, and I, I guess this year was very different because, you know, I was just middle along, and basically this whole year has been one big challenge, you know, to me. You know, it's been very challenging, you know, as far as um, you know my professional life, my career, everything has been very challenging. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you care to dive deep? I, I, I don't want to get all Oprah-like on you, but uh, <laughs> you seem to be um, an interesting individual. I mean, I've been, man, I've been going through going through the motions where I, I was working for the government for ten years. Then I, I had um, a uh, incident where I fell into a coma. I was sick. Like, the oh, whole, cool. the whole time. Yeah, I was working at my job, and my job is like, it's very stressful. And I was getting sick, but I didn't know exactly what I was sick with. And I and, and I was being late. I was like calling out sick to work and calling out sick and, and just relaxing, trying to calm my body and get everything under control. And they, then one day, um, this year about um, once like what May, they drunk on me, like what in May, May August, but right like right before summertime. Mm -hmm. I I, ca I came home. I went to, went to the doctor. I came home. I took my medicine because I thought it was my blood pressure. I took my medicine. Next thing you know, I passed out. And then next thing you know, I'm in the hospital. And it was mm -hmm. like, do you know where you're at? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And it was like, well, you you in the hospital? I was like, what? And I couldn't breathe and everything. My throat was killing me. And it was like, oh, you've been out for like a week. And I was like, what? That was in a Whoa. coma. He was like, yeah. And it was like, you almost died. Your sugar was out of control. Like you, like people in your condition would be dead, you know. But you, you didn't die. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and wow. I was like, thank God, okay. And, you know, my whole family was like bucking out because they was like, oh man, you, you know, they was like, they was like, oh man, we had to buy medicine. And you almost died. Then I got out of the hospital after after like a good week. I had to like my body had what's the word uh, they had to put me on a, a liquid diet while I was in the hospital I had like the stuff fed into my veins and my blood sugar was taken like every day and I had to get out the hospital I was mad weak I couldn't walk I was barely walk I could move like my muscles my muscles had to grow again so I was staying mm -hmm. home I was staying home but I stayed home for, I stayed home for like over the summer like basically June, July, August like the whole three months I was like in, in my just my house trying to like work my, get my muscles back to work in order so I went back right. to work Next thing you know, I'll go back to work and everything is okay. I got my sugar under control. I, you know, the doctor was like, oh, you're a diabetes, a type 1, like 1. 1.5. And not type 2 yet. He was like, because your kidneys, like my kidneys was shut, my kidneys shut down. And my kidneys healed themselves after, after, after everything was flushed down. They got, they got all my sugar under control. So I went back to work. 
I told my boss this is what happened. I got all my medical documentation to cover me for the time I was sick to when I was in the hospital. And so you know, everything's going well. About a month later, they was like, Well, we have they called me to the office and they was like, Well, we have to we have to have we have to resume the the removal situation you was you was um, under prior to you being sick. So they tried to get rid of me regardless of why I was being sick or not. So next thing you know, they came down with it. Like a week later, they came down after after I got my union die. We talked to them. Everything seemed fine. Then a week later, they was like, "Well, we have to. Our decision is we gonna have to let you go." So after ten years of service, no issues, no violations. I have flawless, flawless, perfect, almost almost near perfect attendance, and no disciplinary actions at all. They was like, "We have to get rid of you because." You know your attendance, as far as you know, prior to your sickness, is not not feasible for us. You know, mm. and I was like, it's 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 a, it's a BS excuse because you know, if a, as a union employee working for the government, you shouldn't be you know let go of some also frivolous uh, nonsense such as attendance when you're when your employee you're deaf. You know, they, but they didn't care. So I had to me and me and the lawyers up right now is up. Um, Applying, uh, court, you know, to it to the appellate board, and you know, we dealing with that. And it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, what's the word? It's a lot of upheaval in my life because you know, right now I'm out of work, and my future's uncertain. You know, and when your future's uncertain and you don't know where to go, that's the worst times in your life because you, you know, uncertainty kills. It kills a lot of your your momentum, your your your, mm -hmm. your ideas. You know, and you want to move forward, and you don't know what's going to happen and the next day, or the day after that, or the day after that. You just have to take it one day at a time. And when I woke, when I came out the hospital, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to take it one day at a time. So when they got rid of me, I was mad. But at the same time, I was like, this could be a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, I try, I try to look at it like a positive, because I mean, I, I, I damn near died, but I did die. You know, I, I'm back, so I can I can look at it like I can look at it like, you know, my life is over, but I can look at it like, okay, this is gonna, this is a blessing in disguise. I could I could be on to something greater in my life, and I think that's on the what I'm doing now and the path I'm on now is is a greater thing in life. Like I don't have to, when I when I, when you work for a corporate entity, you get bogged down and you lose your dreams and you lose your soul. And I was kind of like that for a while. You know, I was just stuck at the same job doing the exact same thing, and I just didn't, I just didn't move, you know, forward, you know. So I have to look at it like it's a, it's opportunities for me to move forward now, and I guess this is what the book, for me right, me publishing with this book was about and moving forward in my life, you know. Right, right, right. Um, kind of, kind of that that push from life. That, uh, I mean, did you see this as motivation once you got, you know, your mind back together, your body back together? It, it was motivation, and I guess this, it, it's like the kick I needed to move forward, you know, in a way, because people, a lot of times you get complacent in life, and you don't, you know, as a writer, you don't want to get complacent. You want to keep moving forward, you know, and, that, and that's, that's kind of like my thing is like, I want to move forward. And I didn't know how to move forward, so I was kind of forced to move forward. So now I have no choice but to move forward, and and I this is motivation to move for me to move on to the next step and and what I do, you know. So that's a good thing, I guess. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm glad you're okay, man, and and out of the coma, man. I would assume uh, it was a very scary. It, it, you know, it's funny. It, everybody keeps saying like, wow, "What was it like?" And I was like, "It just felt like I was taking a nap." <laughs> That's all it felt like. It didn't feel like I was dying. It felt like I just took a nap and I was napping. I woke up like, "Damn, that nap was good." And I woke yeah. up like the next day. That's what it felt like. It felt like time was like 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 a blink in the eye. Yeah, freaking time warp. You lose a whole week. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it, I, man. So, I want to talk to you about the back cover of your most recent book release, um, uh -huh. and it says that one of your main goals is to inspire others to read, but not only to read but to create. Um, can you yeah. go into that a bit for us? Okay. Um. Well, you know, funny back in the day, 
I used to go I was a kid, I used to go to bookstores and Barnes and Nobles and, and I used to see all these books on the wall and I just was like and I was like, Oh man, these are great books and I go to the library, these are great books. But it's growing up. Growing up now that you know, as a, as, a, as a black man, I see things a little differently, you know. And I go to bookstores and I see the African American lit and lit, and it's always it's always in the back. I kind of looked at it like, why is literature by African Americans always in the back or put it aside or not promoted clearly? And and I, and I got to a point where I was like, in my head, I'm thinking subconsciously, I'm, I'm thinking everybody should have a free chance to create something great in their life no matter what you know and i want and i want kids to have that harry potter moment you know we see all these characters you know that run around the tv screen and they're not made by anybody of color they're not it's sad they're not though and i and i kind of want to be that person to, to 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 get over that bridge and to show people that listen our stories matter too you know and these kids out here reading these corny books and they watch the corny shows i mean i miss i miss shows like the boondocks you know i, I love that show yeah. i i really i really wish aaron magruder did not sell it off because he had he had he had something great with it and, and i and i and i and i watched it for and i and i not just to watch the show but i watched the comic strip when it came in the daily news i brought the the the, the um the graphic novel when it came out of the library i brought that i was basically a, a big fan ever since it, ever since ever since it came out you know and it was something special and i wanted and i wanted to create something similar special to it, like that you know mm -hmm. i wanted to make I want to make my name cement in the minds of, of our kids out there, you know? Right. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to do right now. It's hard, but I'm trying to do it. Yes, sir. You know? Sure. I want them, when they go to the library and they see a kid that looks like them, I want, to be like, they want, to, I want them to look at the cover and be like, oh man, that looks great. Let me pick it up and see what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And they get and they read it back and they're like, oh, this sounds, like, this sounds like a good story. And I want them to be engrossed in it, you know? I don't want them to just be like, okay, that we don't have any books that, that doesn't have any black or minority characters. And then they say, you know, there is. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, to downplay or crap on anybody else's stream. That's not black. I'm just saying that we need to, we need to have our own share too. That's all. Definitely, definitely. Man, I gotta agree with that, man. So from what I'm able to gather about you, it looks like exciting times are just ahead. Um, your latest release is called Eat the Yun, and I don't want to do this as a Nuba, Atheon and Nuba, yeah. Nuba. Ethion and Nuba. All right. Yeah. Uh, was not like an overnight idea. So when, or it could have been, I don't know. So when, when did uh, this whole plot and journey start for you for this particular book? <sighs> um, I wrote the book last year. Like one day I was just, after, after I wrote Aaron, my um, other book, Aaron, the origin of Aaron Jackson, I just sat there. And I was staring at the computer screen. I was like, I gotta find. Like I was just thinking to myself. I was like, what to like? Like I gotta write something. And then next thing you know, like I have mo these moments of inspiration where I'm seeing something, and I and and that that night I just opened up my laptop and started writing. And I was seeing everything in my head. And I just started writing and writing and writing and writing. And basically, like the f one week, one week and change, I just basically, basically knocked out 190 pages. And was like, this is a story where I just sat and I wrote it and wrote it and wrote it. And I just wrote everything I saw in my head. And I was like, this is, is a story, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, it's hard. It's hard to explain because it's like sometimes I'm, my mind is blank, and then sometimes my mind has this this flash of a story, and I write and I sit and I write it, you know, and I just keep writing it and writing it, writing. It's like a it's like a it's like a, a waterfall, and I just keep writing and writing and writing and writing until it runs dry, you know. Right. And I need and I and I just basically wrote everything out within a week. You know, I just wrote it out. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Um, is, is this going to turn into a series or? Yes. Yes. It's going uh, to be a very big series where 
<laughs> where it's it's going to be a really big series because the main character he has to he has to he has to find these people that 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 blew up his island and hurt these people he has to find them and he has to stop them he can he knows he has to stop them. so there's basically the journey from the beginning of him you know being a regular person to to becoming a king you know this is his journey you know and you're gonna meet a bunch of characters along the way that helps him out and he for his alliances to get these people and it's it's one big adventure you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be more than just one book you know because the book ends on like book one and you see how it's like it's setting up the second book you know definitely all right all right so far, how, how has the uh, reception been? I, I, I was stalking your social media the other day and seeing that you got the physical copies in. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like it's hard because I, I, I've had I've had a lot of people when they read it, they like the cover, they like the, the, the synopsis, they want to buy it. But as far as exposure goes, I need more exposure, more and more and more and more exposure. You know, because it's like the story is great i've had a lot of people come to me be like yo this could be a movie this could be a tv show man you need to do something with this i'm like yeah but i ain't i don't have corporate money behind me man i don't have radio spots and, and tv and tv commercials and all that nonsense like the majors do you know i'm published independently you know it's hard I, everything everything i do is grassroots like right like i just like last week i went to um Eagle Academy of Harlem, uptown, and it's an all-black school. So it's a boys' school. It's a good school. It's a great school. It has a lot of a lot of kids. I, I, and I talked to the director. Me and the director, we chopped it up. And next thing you know, I told him about the book. He loved it. He was like, "Listen, let me order some books." And I and basically, I, I, I donated. I donated about twenty-five books to him. And he was like, and he was like, "Listen, I have I have a, a coworker. She runs Durga Marshall School down the block in Harlem." So I went and talked to her. She was like, I, I, and she loved it. She was like, she orders 50 books. She orders 50 books. And next thing you know, they, it was 75 books processed like that. And, next, and they got them. And, you know, I'm just waiting, to, waiting for the feedback to see what the kids say, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, everything I do is grassroots, you know. Everything I do is grassroots. And it has to be grassroots because I ain't got corporate money behind me. It would be nice if I could get a book agent, but a lot of the times when when I sent my query letters out, the book agents they 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 liked it, but then they gave me the usual. I'm talking about it's not it's not what we like right now, or it's not possible right now, or you know we don't accept this kind of genre right now. It's like, what's the point then? You know, what's the point of being a book agent if you don't see greatness with it? You know, so you have to forge your own, and that's what I'm doing. Cause you know, I don't have time. I don't have time to wait for book agents. I don't have time for for, for deals. You know, if you're gonna make, if you if you like it, and you're gonna make a deal, that's fine. But at the same time, I'm not gonna wait for you to to, to do it. I'm not gonna wait for you to do it. I'm gonna get off my butt and go get it. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. You know. Yeah. Are there any mm -hmm. projects that precedes Ethiopian and Noble? Uh, yeah, I did write um, a story called The Origin of Aaron Jackson, and it was a great book, but I had to take it down for um, a rewrite as far as when I, when, yeah, it, it, needed a, it needed a little bit of a rewrite because the uploading process kind of messed up the, the grammar structure, so I have, to, I have to sit down and rewrite it, and I'm going to republish it probably back in January, so, and then when that republishes people will have another another series they can buy into and like and then i'll have the second a Anuba book come out right after because i'm almost done i'm almost done well i'm halfway done with the second book right now so you know it's coming fast definitely all right, all right. yeah so man when i seen the cover man i i felt like this was going to be a great adventure yeah um, that's what i was going for man i mean the artist we sat down and we, i was just like let just give me what you what you when i told him the, the concept he just wrote he just basically got on his computer and basically just drew out what he thought was a concept and i was like this could work and i was like at first and i, and I mean usually I, I like like i like hand-drawn animation but computer animation is fine and i'm like for not it's not bad for the cover it's like the next cover is going to be way more ridiculous but 
the the initial cover is great. It's it's a great for a good start, you know. Yeah, and I like yeah. I liked how I liked how the green is in the background and I'm like, okay, the the colors really it really pops. You know. Yes, I was, that's a good choice. Yeah. Yes, I like the color myself. So So is Etion um a run a runaway prince or an underdog that lives in a jungle? What's his background? <laughs> nah, he's he's not he's not a runaway prince. He's not a, he's not he's not really a, well. He's he's kind of he's well. It's hard to explain because in the beginning of the story, um, Atheon is a young prince. He's like when you first meet him, he's like thirteen, fourteen, and you know basically he's royalty, but he doesn't he doesn't kind of want to be royalty at the, at, at the beginning because he's like he just wants to be a regular person. You know, and his and his tribe is like a, a bunch of um, warrior monks where they have this huge tribal society where they ride animals and they're very eco friendly. And he's kind of like, kind of like he and they do magic, but he doesn't want to be king. He he's kind of like he's kind of like on the, on the fence to be a king because it's a big responsibility. So he's kind of like, you know, why don't I just be like a regular guy? You know, but then one day when he's pondering. That that idea, the island is attacked by these uh, druids, and these druids they come in and they steal this this device from them that they use to, to communicate with the animals, and basically they they slaughter like half the population of the island. The island came, but basically they like N uh, Atheon and Nuba escapes the island with um, their caretaker. So then the father dies, the father's lion dies, and the mother mother is like presumed dead. Where she she dies protecting the sun, and then next thing you know, there's a jump forward about seven years later, where Atheon is now like kind of like an uh, earlier young adult, twenty like twenty one, twenty two, and he's kind of like he has it. He his the survivors all rallied behind him, where he built like a merchant um shipping vessel because right now the age is like an industrial age, like right before the industrial age is kind of like in a pirate age now, so he builds like a uh, a shipping um textile company. Where they deliver goods, and he basically is on on the on the on the slide though. It's like a spy network where he has he has he's still he's still hunting the people that's out there that stole that stole the device from them. So he has a, a idea to hunt them, but he built a spy network consisting of the merchant ships where they deliver information back and forth from port to port, finding out where these people came from, getting artifacts, weapons, whatever they need. So then one day he gets a letter stating in the mail that yo. They found them. So then he's like, okay, we're going to go after these guys. We're going to go get them. And then that's when the adventure really kicks off, you know? Okay. Yeah. And the backstory of the uh, lion? I mean, uh. Yeah. Nubu? Nubu? Yeah, yeah Nubu is like a lion. Yeah, he's a, he's a rare black lion. He's a genetic, um. Uh, black lion. Usually lions aren't black, so he's like the first of his. First of, uh. You know his kind or whatever. So his father is a white lion, albino white lion, and basically, they hit the device that was taken from them uh, off the off the tribe of Alia. It basically bonds the animals with with the human host, and they share a joint consciousness, where the human gets lion like gets like cat like powers, but the lion gets human intelligence, thought, ideas like they they form. A form of uh, a telepathic connection where the lion is the lion can actually speak. The lion is not stupid, it's very smart. And like, you, well, you can say something to it, and it'll fully understand you, you know. But only the person who's the host that holds the host and who has a link between the lion and the person can understand their thoughts. So, and they speak wow. to each other. So, you know, they work it, they work in like a tag team type, type, type deal where, you know, if 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 Atheon would say something, new, but new, but would do it. And Nubu will say something to Atheon, and he'll he'll know what he's what he's thinking, you know. So he's working a tag team, but it's a great it's a great um concept. But on the flip side of that is that if if one of them gets hurt, the other one gets hurt. So Ooh. they they share a, they share not just a consciousness but a soul at the same time. They share a, a double soul. So if one of them gets killed, they have they, the other one who's left remaining shares a half life. So it's imperative that they stick together as far as them living long, you know. They have mm -hmm. to protect each other's backs, you know. And the whole tribe was like that. You had the tribe of 
the lion the lion riders who the, the lion riders basically was the father who was the who was the king and basically you had like the lions you had the tigers the the, pan, the panthers and the pumas and basically the whole each uh, each tribe had its own type brand lion that they rode they rode into battle because these aren't these aren't ordinary lions they're ordinary animals they're big they, they grow huge so they could wear armor they could be ridden you know they could fight you know it's not like you know ordinary lions in the jungle they're they're like twice the size of that mm. you know <laughs> wow yeah. so it's 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 like it's like it, so it really does into a fantasy where uh, action adventure fantasy where the lion is actually like a steed you know it's not like a regular mm. ordinary lion these things grow to six feet six feet tall and when they're sitting you know when they're sitting they're like six foot tall they're not ordinary right. lions you know yeah, yeah. Wow, large creatures huh? <laughs> yeah but the, I mean, the good the good news is that they're like human so they're not gonna shit in the house and then act stupid. They're going to go outside yeah. and shit and they come back in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like if they, if, they, if they need if they if the like 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 in the uh, certain part of the story where where Nuba is telling Atheon, he's like, listen, you gotta get over your last girlfriend, man. He's like, listen, I know you were still thinking about her, but he said like, you need to move on, man. He, and then Atheon brings a girl to the house, and the girl doesn't believe believe him about about being an Aaliyah, alien. Because it was a myth. The island everybody thinks that the, the lions the lion riders was a myth. So the girl is basically goes downstairs to like leave and then she sees the lion and freaks out and the Atheon was like, Yo, are you okay? She was like, Why is he why are you saying there like that? He, and the dude was like, Hey, I think you probably got some <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's like a hilarious conversation between between Nuba and Avion, but it's funny because in the story, Nuba is the comedic relief in a way, and Avion is like the straight man. So it's it's just hilarious, you know. And they have like a real good friendship vibe to them, you know. All right, All right, All right. All right. So my listeners know I wouldn't feel like I was doing my job if I didn't completely absorb everything about you. Uh, so sometimes I do notice some strange stuff on these internet pages. And while I was doing my research, um, you have a lot of hats. And there's also one more thing that we have in common I'll mention in just a second. But uh, you're a creative being, you're a writer, novelist, entrepreneur podcast host co-creator of a podcast ceo of your own company that's quite yeah, yeah that i'm trying i'm really really trying to get off the, get that off the ground you know that costs a lot of money though so yeah the uh the company yeah Vulcanite night media i'm really trying to get that off the Vulcanite ground you know, as far as everything yeah Vulcan night right media. i mean so I, Vulcan I, night I, media. I have the yeah oh go ahead go ahead i'm sorry no, I'm saying that it's it's still it's still in the beginning phases where I have the logos and the copyright and the trademarks. I have everything done. I just need the money right now, the financing as far as everything gets off the ground and everything. I can just start doing interviews and doing big things, you know. But you know, it's it's a long way off. It's just the beginning. Though. Right on, right on. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you say a media company, what what all does uh, your company do? Well. As far as a media company, like I want to, I want to, I really, really, really want to get into animation. Like mm -hmm. that's the next step as far as the books go. Like as far as when the if the books do really take off, then I want to step into animation where I do have, um, uh, I have like, you know, the Aaron Jackson series. I can animate that, and if you don't know about my animate that, I really, really want to get into animation. That's the next step, major step I want to do because. Like, I think that is a great, great, like, level where we could reach, where I, well, we could, you know, just anybody could reach the kids, you know, because a lot of kids, a lot of teenagers, a lot of adults like animation. Like, everybody thinks, it's an old misconception that everybody, that, oh, cartoons are for kids. That's not, that's not true anymore. Like they say, video no. games for kids. That's not true either. You know that whole idea that cartoons are kids. No, there's actually like if you watch some cartoons, there are mature cartoons and there are cartoons for kids. You know, there's yeah. a difference between the Amazing Orange or Adventure Time and the Batman the animated series and Justice League. There is a clear difference. You know, 
and I'm trying to get into that mode where, like, I grew up with like a lot of cartoons, a lot of anime. I really wanted to create my own anime. I really want to have my own media production company that makes cartoons and other forms of media such as comic books, you know, and comic strips and getting in that general vicinity, you know. That's the next phase I want to do. I really want to hook up with a lot of animation companies and start to start to create my own in-house type of uh, animation studio. Right on. You know? I can dig that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm currently watching, uh, well, catching the fifth season of BoJack Horseman. Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that show's <is> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Man, could you imagine that show in real life? Like, on a real sitcom like they'll be in so much I don't know it's, stuff it's, they say. Yeah, he, yeah the, kid, the main character is wild he's been doing some wild stuff I'll be like wow this guy is wild yeah man like it's, it's like, like Rick, I love I love Rick, Rick and Morty like I like Rick and Morty Rick and Morty is the most funniest thing I've ever seen in my life like one of the funniest things like South Park is not it's not funny anymore. It has its moments, but Rick and Morty basically blows everything out the water from me. Like it's basically everything I've loved rolled up in the one. It's satire, it's dark humor, it's mature stuff, and it's violent, but it's all wrapped up in a nice little ball, and you can just watch it. It's like so crazy. I have to like, check it out. I haven't watched it, but that's what everybody says. Yeah. That you know, yeah, you, yo, you you definitely need to check yeah. it out. They really, 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 really go off the deep end uh, on a lot of stuff. They yeah. really, really better do. than King of the Hill. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. King of the no. Hill is good, but yeah, King of the Hill is good, but that's like yeah. that's too boring for my taste. I kind of Rick and Morty has these these situations where the uncle. The uncle uh, Rick is basically like the super genius, and he takes his grandson on adventures. And uh, he's basically they jump up from dimensions to dimensions in the parallel universes. Basically, they they get a lot, they get in so much trouble, but it's so funny because they you know they have to figure out their way to get out of it, and it is just so funny. Like the situations are just wild, you know. You I mean, do you, you, do you watch, like yeah. it because it's sci-fi? I love sci-fi, but it's it it's not it's not just not just sci-fi, but it's it, the concepts, the ideas, and the stories. They really, really, really get you. Where this is what I would, you know, like when when you want when you want when you want want something to watch, and you sit there and you watch it, you be like, yo, I've always wanted to see shit like this, you know, like what would happen if I went to a parallel universe and I and I saw something and I would not and I stole it and they take it back you know this character Rick he does he basically does he's he does the craziest things and you like I get it <laughs> you do, you just go I get it you know I'm a big sci-fi fan you know so I've been like yo this is this is ridiculous I love it all right, all right. I'm gonna check it out I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off your mm -hmm. word check it out yeah so um the thing the thing that me and you have in common is thoughts crime Oh, yeah. The crimes you talk about the show? Yeah, yeah. The show. Oh, you know, you know, uh, sincere and uh, Prince. Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't know him personally, mm, personally. Okay. But right, we are right. friends on social media, and uh, I've been listening to his show since he first started. Ah. Uh, yeah. That's a song. I love. I love. I love their commentary they they really really do put a good commentary down as far as everything else is music critics go and everything else so that's a good that's a good yeah, I'll be, be listening to like a lot of times I, I listen to a lot of stuff online so you know definitely so speaking of podcasts you have one of your own mm, right now it's on hiatus I did. I did have one of my own. I I do like host some shows. Like I had the Three Queens guys, and then basically I, you know, we had a little situation where my MacBook got messed up and all the data got scrambled. So I had to start mm. from scratch. So basically, I just did my own like did my own you know solo broadcast. So I mm. basically upload like stuff like the Contraria Corner. And stuff like that like i had the like the macbooks like when you basically record macbook has like had like a studio the, the, the studio program and basically i was recording all the microphones and basically the audio and just putting the, putting the music out and basically editing everything in real time and 
everything worked great, but then the MacBook got broken and all the information got messed up. So right now it's on. And then the other, my other um, co-work, my other, well, the host, he he doesn't show up. So at the same time, it's like we can't do we can't do the show if you don't show up. So I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, screw it. I got I gotta do it solo. You know. But it's there. If people want to listen to it, it's, it's online. If they want to listen to it, it's called Three Queen Guys. Yeah, it's, it's Three Queens Guys. Okay, cool. Yeah, on YouTube. All right, guys, you heard it. Check it out. It's on YouTube. So, what kind of topics did you guys cover? Man, we just we just talk about regular stuff. We talk about the Grammys. We talk about Black Panther. We talked about. Movies, music, you know, situations, relationships, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Black Panther, I have to ask. Overrated or not? No. It, it's it's great. It was great. It was great for the time it came out. If I don't, I don't understand how people. It's not overrated at all. I don't think it is. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's overrated. <laughs> Why do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that? Mainly because now I, I love the, cin- uh, the cinematography. I love the storyline, right, right. the plot, uh-huh. and everything. But I think uh-huh. the way, and you and I are black, but I think yeah. the way that the black community pumped the movie up to stand for something that it really don't stand for made it uh-huh. overrated to me. I mean, I mean, I, I guess, I guess the black community was just proud they had a, a major black superhero. I mean, other than Blade and other than like who else? You know, I can't think of any any of a black superheroes on a big screen right now that was basically putting at work. You know, I mean, Blade Blade was the first. We gotta give credit to Wesley Snipes for for at least you know jumping off the Marvel universe in a way. You know, because right. without him, they wouldn't be Spider Man, and without Spider Man, they right. wouldn't be the rest of the, of the movies that came out after that. You know, so I mean, I guess you know, it it, it, it was it was something that that needed to happen. Before, that right now, I guess Marvel really, really wanted to have the black character, black a Black Panther that came out. I mean, and as far as the people that's hyping it up, I I mean, like, listen. How many how many white characters in the Marvel movies you had that had Captain America, you had Thor, you had Hulk, you had what? You know, Iron Man. <laughs> this is this Black Panther was a movie with all black cast, director, major star, co stars, gaffers, workers, set in it was put it's set in fictional Africa, but it was filmed in Atlanta, so you know, that it it was it's it's kinda groundbreaking, you know kind of groundbreaking it's not overrated you know i don't understand where all the hate is coming from i really don't you know mm-hmm. yeah i mean no I mean, hate it was good. no no hate nah. but nah. I just not, no i'm not saying from you hating from you i'm just saying hating yeah, in yeah. general like when i go online there's a lot of people hating on it like why are you hating on it so much you know yeah. there's no reason to hate it I guess, like I said, man, a lot of a lot of people hyped it up. Uh, it had too much hype, and uh, when I went to see it, <laughs> and I'm a big comic geek, man, big comic geek. Uh, so when I see stuff translate to the stream, sometimes it just doesn't resonate to how the 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 comic side of me perceives it. You know, I be uh, checking for accuracy, <laughs> and I know I can't really do that in the in, in the in the movie <laughs> world, and. And it, and it sometimes it just disappoints me because I'm like, yo, you could have told a better story than, you know, Killmonger. I like the Killmonger character and he was yeah, in a yeah, way he, was he wasn't he, he yeah, he wasn't a villain in my book. I mean he he was ruthless but he wasn't a villain in my book. He was just a a, a fucked up guy who wanted to basically like he's an anti hero. He's an anti hero. He's like he's like Magneto. He's like Magneto, the exact same way like Magneto, you know. Like if I, hey, listen, I don't think this is right, and you know I'm gonna kill you because you're gonna kill me. You know, he basically just wants to throw everything back at the world the world gave him. He's not, he's not a villain, a villain person. He didn't want to rule the world. He just wanted to correct it. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right, man. So this seems like a corny question to ask you. Well, okay. um, 
But I'm allowed one corny question for any of you. That's the quota. <laughs> yeah. What do you see yourself in five years from now? <sighs> wow. That is a very hard question. Um, five years from now, honestly, maybe doing movie projects as far as getting my foot in the Hollywood door because I think that's the next step in progression. Like, I need the money to open my own studio, so I really, really need the money to, you know, I want, I do want to make movies. That is, that is, that is my great, great goal, is to make movies, is to write movies, and basically create movies. That is one of my great goals, so I hopefully, within five years, I do, I do sell screenplays, and I do make money off of them. So I hopefully can build up my own studio and get my projects on the on the silver screen or the big screen, either way. That is where I see myself in five years, you know, doing that. You know. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, what do you think it's gonna to take to get there besides money? A whole lot of luck and connections. Mm. Because you definitely need luck and connections Because, you know, people It's not what you know, it's who you know You know, but you could you like, you could be you could be the best in the world that's up, But if you don't know a certain amount of people Or know the right person Your stuff is not going to get seen Or you're not going to get, you know the, the recognition you want Or get it out to a large group of people that, that it needs to be seen You know, you definitely need to know the right people You know definitely need to know the right people definitely right about that so who do you look up to in life um i don't know i mean who do i look up i mean that's a hard question because you know as far as looking up to people i mean i had heroes growing up but now as an adult it's kind of like i don't really need to look up to anybody anymore i just have to focus on my goals you know, yeah. just focus on yourself. You know, as a, as a kid, you can look up to many people, but when, as you get older, you tend to, you tend to, you tend to be shaped by the world you're in and your environment. So, mm -hmm. you know, as as far as me, I'm, I mean, I just turned 38, so I don't have nobody else to look up to. Oh, I'm, mm -hmm. a, I'm an adult. I'm, I mean, you know, I, I'm an adult. I can't really look up to anybody right now. I have to focus on my path and my goals. You know, as far as getting to where I gotta go. You know, as a kid, I used to, I used to like Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, um, um, who else? I used to like a lot of people. A lot, a lot of, I used to look up to a lot of people. Um, just a lot of, a lot of, you know, people that that shaped the world and you know to, that tried to make it better. Um, I, Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson mm. as a boxing fan. I used to I used to I used to I used to look up to Mike Tyson. <laughs> Even though he was crazy. Early Mike Tyson was that dude. Early Mike yeah, Tyson yeah, yeah. was that dude. Young Mike Tyson was that dude. And growing up when you watch boxing the, the Mike Tyson boxing matches, you knew he was in for a, a, a fun time. You know? Yeah, you got a show. But, yeah, man. But now as an adult like there's nobody else to look up to as, as far as I as far as I'm concerned you know I mean as a kid yeah you have you do have heroes and stuff but for me as an adult I don't have heroes anymore like that I got you I, I can dig that I can dig that man mm. definitely alright man so looking back on your beginnings and your career in retrospect um, is there anything that you would do differently now if you had a chance to just hit that reset button like on the Nintendo? <laughs> what I do differently? Um, well, I would have I would have kept writing after my first um, book came out and, and, I, and I didn't it didn't work out with the publisher. Like I like I went to it like after after the situation with the first first book I had out and I went with the small time publisher I kind of was like happy but then after a while I kind of was depressed mm -hmm. because he the guy he was the owner he was like real 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 shady 
and I kind of was depressed because I'm like asking him like are oh, you gonna help me promote the book are you gonna help me put this out are you gonna put that out and then I was getting a run around from this guy and I'm like listen I, I did not slave over this book to have you just give me the run around and I just got real depressed and I just stopped writing you know I, didn't, I, I stopped writing for a long time and I just was like you know I wish I, I wish I kept that fire you know yeah in my 20s i wish i kept that fire going you know i didn't start writing again so i was like 30 and change you know so i just focused so, on work after you know you know after that was, was there like a hiatus um between some some of the books that you put up yeah like when i was 20 i put out my first novel and then when the whole situation happened with him, I kind of was like, I felt, I just felt bad because I was, I just stopped writing, like altogether. Like I stopped writing, I just stopped. I didn't write for a long time, and then I had the idea of Aaron Jackson, and then I started writing again. You know, I didn't have that until I was thirty and change. You know, I got you. And it was crazy because it's like that long hiatus. It was just wow. You know. Hmm. How long was it? long time like man 10 years 10 years oh wow yeah oh we're glad you found the fire again yeah man me too yeah man <laughs> all right guys after the music break it'll be time for our usual tradition it is called the hot seat and our fans love this part of the segment of course along with the actual interview but the audience will get a chance to hear norman sing for us maybe he can sing I do not sing. I, I don't. I don't sing. Please do not. Don't sing. sing. Okay. 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 What about poetry? <laughs> know any good poems? No, I. I don't. Not a poem guy. Okay. 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 <laughs> Inspirational speeches? Uh, not not the top of my head. <laughs> okay. 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 We're not gonna get the Rocky speech tonight. Okay. Uh, what about spoken word? I don't do fucking work. Okay, okay, like, okay, okay. No. You from New York, the the hip hop yeah. mecca. What about freestyle raps? Nah, I don't do freestyle. <laughs> I don't do oh, freestyle, no, no. man. Okay, nah, okay, man. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What about a live instrument? Can you play play a guitar, a piano? Mm, nah, drums? I I I stopped playing piano when I was a kid. Like I don't like I have dairy, but I don't. I didn't follow through on it. I got not finished. Gotcha. So, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. No big deal. What about jokes? <laughs> I'm not a comedian either. I, I don't really know any okay. good jokes. Okay, uh, okay, okay. All right, how about a story? Uh, what kind of story? Any kind of story. Like, hey, this one time I had this... Uh, she wasn't a sex worker, but she was like mm. the, uh, I don't know if you remember, there was a period of time. Uh, I grew up in the, uh, I was born in 83, grew up in oh. the uh, 90s. And there used to be these phone numbers you could call and just listen to girls talk, like 1-800. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You mean a chat line? Like, no, chat no, line. no, it was, no, no, it was before the chat line. This was oh, okay. before chat line. This was like 1-800-TALK-DIRTY. Uh, okay. And you would call the number, and there would be a female at the end just talking dirty. And that's it. Uh, there was no numbers changed, no dates, nothing. It was just because the, the lady could be anywhere in the world. So I uh, had one of those on my show. Um, she called herself a, a, a voiceover sex actor. And uh, she told some pretty good stories. So I said all this. I said that to say this: that no story is off limit on Vigilantes Radio. I don't have any like crazy stories that I was dealing with that I could tell you right off the top of my head. I really don't. I wish I could, but I don't have any off the top of my head like that. Okay, you know? okay, okay, okay. What about reading a bit from your book? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Uh, what part? You choose. Dillard's choice. Oh, man. Um, all right. I could probably read from chapter three when it began the book. Okay. All 
right, let me see if I can get a copy. Uh. All right. So what do you want? So what you just want a just want a description, or you just like how would you how would you want me to read it? No, nah, just dive in. Yeah, yeah. Set up the of course the part that you're finna read. Set up the backstory, so we'll know exactly okay. where you're jumping in. Okay. Let me see. <sighs> Okay. All right. We're gonna start chapter three. Basically, this is in the beginning of the book where um, Atheon is still young and Nuba's still a cub, and you know Atheon is still going to school and doing magic and learning how to how to fight and sword fight and everything. And um, we can start from there. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Ready. Okay. Is, is people listening? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Chapter three. A few days later, the children trained with magic, learning more of the basics. Priestess Alundra trained their skills, forcing them to utilize magic with the individual fighting styles. They competed in mock battles, testing their skills against each other, fighting in the Great Hall. A large auditorium, bright with magic crystals, above them sat a large viewing section was seating. Flags with the country symbols and banners draped from the settings around them. On the main floor was a large sigil, sigil for Ua and the elements surrounding it. The teacher goes, Okay class, you learned the basics of magic and how to incorporate into individual fighting styles. But I need a demonstration. Can I get a volunteer? Ifian meekly raised his hand as he walked down and wandered away with them to the map. Can I have a number to participate in Lundra Act? As the kids murmured and whispered, suddenly a hand shot up from the crowd, and Atheon noticed it was Lord Satoa. Yes, Lord Satoa, please come down. So the two young masters, please go to the weapon hall and change and choose your weapon. Atheon chose a single lacquered wooden sword. Satoa picked two. Atheon and many others thought it was an orthodox with him using two swords and adapting it into his fighting style, knowing that magic needs a free hand to be utilized. Little did Atheon know that Satoa has been planning something more devious with his knowledge of magic. Would the two students please step forward into the circle? Alundra says, I must tell you two students that it's a simple sparring match. The first one to admit the feet, submit, or be thrown outside the ring, loses. Also, the women's weapons you have are not ordinary. They are branded with magical en energy to stimulate pain, so if it touches you, you will feel a small, shocking sensation, so be forewarned. The two nodded at the priestess and got into their fighting stances. Atheon was measured as he pointed his sword into Satoa's direction, and Satoa took both his swords and did the same. Again, the priestess shouted to a, both kids that they won each other. Satoa leapt into action. Leaping through the air, Atheon rolled out of the way. Atheon stood on the other side as it seemed Satoa put both his hands together on top of each other. Uh, stretching his fingers on top and bottom, he chanted, Fire and Aries, over and over again, as a miniature cyclone of fire began forming in his hand. Atheon had to think fast as he focused his Ua. Colors around the room began to swirl as the Toa screamed, Pua Fia and Aries, and directed a doubt of wind and fire at Atheon as he was ready as he shot at Korra Ken. Suddenly, a shield of large stone formed in his hand. Atheon concentrated his Ua on keeping the stone shield whole as the wind and fire pushed him slightly backwards. Atheon could feel Satoa's power waning in the cell he let up. Korra Ken. Poor Ken, Atheon shouted as he tossed a stone shield at Satoa. Satoa ducked as Atheon slashed at him with his sword. Satoa defensively fought, not being pushed out of bounds. Satoa turned the tables as he went on the offensive. The swords clashed as the wood smashed into each other. The students was enthralled, cheering them both on. Satoa came down with a strike as Atheon defended, and Satoa got in a lucky shake with a back slash of one of the other, striking Atheon across his arm. Atheon felt a slight pain through his lever of embrace. Satoa sneered viciously as he knew he got a quick, in, quick strike in. Then he went in on the attack, swinging at Atheon like a wild beast. Atheon had to defend but also stayed inside the circle. For every hit, Atheon defended. Satoa was able to get close and nearly graze him. Atheon should have trained harder. He was not prepared for Satoa's savagery, but he needed to win. He needed to figure out that Satoa, he figured out that Satoa could match it, magic for magic, even with a change in company. 
A fan had to think fast. He was finding officials a point who was more skilled than he realized. And that was between chapter three. All right, all right. Thank you very much, Norman. Uh, let everybody know where they can connect with you online. Okay, uh, I'm on Facebook um, under Norman R. Colson. You can just go, um, go to Facebook, put Norman R. Colson, and add me there. I'm on Twitter at The Darkest Timeline at Norman R. Colson. And I'm on Instagram, Norman Colson Official, it's one word. And um, I don't have Snapchat yet, so they could just, you know, just think, don't think about that. So I have Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And on my YouTube, they can just put me Prometheus Returns. You can add my channel and watch the videos and watch my interviews and stuff like that. Um, and the book is on sale. They can just go to Amazon, type in um, Atheon and Nuba. It's on Kindle. And it's on uh, paperback. It's five dollars for Kindle, ten dollars for paperback. So you can just pick it up and let me know. And we leave a review when they're done. You know, see if they like it. And it's for kids, right. it's for teens, all kids of all ages, basically 13 and up, teens, per, you know, preferably. Uh, um, if you're an adult, you can read it too. You know, that's a great thing. You know, if you want to buy it for the kids, they could do so. It's a good kids book as, 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 as far as adventures go. You know, it's not really that violent and that, not many too, too many sex, sex, sexual situations. So, it's, it's a good kids book. You know? Nice. All right, guys, and just in case you need those links, we have them in the show notes and um, description of this episode. So make sure you click those hyperlinks. Well, some of them are hyperlinks. Uh, the rest of them you'll have to at and then whatever the uh, social media site is. Hey, Norman, I appreciate your time, man, and I appreciate you reading from your book. Um, Thank you. Any any last words before we part ways? Um. No, I don't really have any last words. I just want to. I just want to thank you for hosting me on to your show tonight. You know, I'm very, very happy to be here. You know, and I'm, I'm willing to come back anytime you want me to. Let me know. I could come back, and you know, when the second book drops, I'll let you know. We could do something together. All right. All right. Okay. Um, I just want everybody to please pick up the book for the holiday season. You know, it's a good stock of stuff for you want the kids to read. It's only five, five, ten dollars. You know putting in stock of stuffers and you know hopefully you know if you review on Amazon please the reviews are the most important thing so they could go on Tableau Wattpad Amazon and leave a review it's just basically tell the world you know that you read it right on right on but thank you my brother we'll connect soon alright thanks man <laughs>